With pleasure. Okay, let's get started. We're on Daf Kuf Ayin Aleph Amid Aleph. And I just want to review where we are, because we're really in the middle of a discussion that goes back to our Mishnah. Mm-hmm. We saw Machlokas, a very important Machlokas, between Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi, as to when a lova, a debtor, makes a partial payment on a loan. How do you treat that? In other words, what do you do now with the documentation? So according to Rabbi Yehuda, you have to tear up the original promise, or let's say the loan was for $1,000. You tear up the original note, and the guy, let's say, paid back 600 of the 1000 You write up a new note for $400. Rabbi Yossi disagrees, and he says, no, the original creditor, the creditor is entitled to re- retain the original loan document, but you write up a receipt and give that to the debtor, and you say, hold on to your receipt. So when you want to make a final payment, if the creditor would demand any more than the 400 based on his original promise, or I know you can show him the receipt. That was the machlokas. We had a statement from Rob from his Talmidim, and that statement essentially suggests that we don't pass them like either of these Tanoim, because the understanding, at least initially, of Rav was that, according to Rebbe Yehuda, when you write the new promissory note, it's dated from today, which gives a disadvantage to the creditor, because his... His um, lien on the debtor's property was originally from the date of the original loan. You shouldn't write the new note from today. So that's why Rob says we don't pa- we paskin like Reb Yehuda that we don't write a shover, that we don't write a receipt for the debtor, but we disagree in the sense that we, we have to date the new promissory note from the original date of the loan, not from the date when the note is written. And the Gemara says, well, there's a brisa that says that Reb Yehuda agrees with that. So what's the point? Why are you saying that we don't paskin like Rebbe Huda? Rebbe Huda does agree with that. So the Gemara says, but there's still a point of difference. Because Rebbe Huda, as we'll see in the Bryce in a moment, says that the witnesses to the partial payment can draft a new promissory note outside of Bastin. But, Re- but Rob says that that new note, if you want to predate it, can only be drafted by a Bastin. Only a Bastin is authorized to draft a note and put on a date that was all the way back to the original loan date. A re- regular Edom do not have that authorization. Okay, so the, that was where we left off yesterday. So the Gemara says, my Brisa. What's this Brisa, where you, which you quoted yesterday, to indicate that according to Reb Yehuda, when we draft the new note, we date it back to the original date of the loan. So the Tanya, Haresha, you know, Shinbo, Elif, Zuzu, Poramehen, Chamesh, Meyozuz, it says that explicitly in this brisa. If a guy is owed $1,000, Shimon owes Ruvain $1,000, and Shimon makes partial payment of $500, so what we do is we dra- the witnesses will draft a new promissory note for the remaining $500, <coughs> and they place the date from the original date of the loan, not from the date when the new, when the new document is drafted. Rabbi Yossi Omer Shtarze Yehei Munach B'Mekomo V'Yichtubu Shovar U'Mipnei Shnei Tvorim Omru Kos Vin Shovar Rabbi Yossi disagrees, as he does in our Mishnah, and he says, no, you don't draft a new promissory note, but rather you let the Malva, the creditor, hold on to the original note, and you draft a receipt for the debtor, and uh, basically saying how much he's already paid. And then the, the Brysa says that Rabbi Yossi holds, there are two reasons why we do this, why we write a shover. The word shover, remember, means receipt. One is because we want to incentivize the lova to pay back the loan, the balance of the loan as quickly as possible. He's already made a partial payment, you should pay back the whole thing. What's the incentive? The lova now has to hold on to his receipt, and if he loses it, or if mice eat it, he's going to be hakmitzaris because then the malva will now be able to collect the full amount and disregard the partial payment. So therefore, it's going to make him a little bit nervous that he should just finish with this already and pay back the balance. That's reason number one. The echas yigma mizman rishon. And the second reason is because we don't want to write a new note for the malva because if it's dated from today, this will destroy the lien that the malva had from from the original date of the loan if it's dated from today. So the Gemara says, but wait a minute, Rabbi Yehuda, Baha Rabbi Yehuda, Nami Mizman Rishon Ka'amak. But Rabbi Yehuda also acknowledges in this b'risa 
that you predate the new promissory note back to the date of the original loan. So why that? Why do you have that second reason? So the Gemara says, "Hachi kamar le Rabbi Yosi le Rabbi Yehuda." Im isman rishon kamar t'pligna alach b'chada. Im isman sheni kamar t'pligna alach b'tarti. What Rabbi Yosi essentially is telling Rabbi Yehuda is, "Rabbi Yehuda, I know that you hold that you don't write a shofar, but instead you draft a new promissory note for the balance of the loan." I don't. I'm not clear on whether you hold that the date on that new note is predated back to the original loan date, or whether it's dated from the date of the drafting of the note. But either way, if you hold it's dated from the date of the draft, then I disagree with you on two points. Number one, you're not giving proper incentive for the loba to pay back quickly. And number two, you're removing, you're destroying the malva's lien. And, if you, and, if, and even if you hold that you write a new note that's predated to the date of the original loan so that allows the malva to retain his lien, I still disagree with you because I think it's always better to write a shover for the loba to incentivize him to pay back the loan ASAP. <laughs> Tanu Rabbana. Now let's look at another b'risa. Shtar shizmano kosov b'shabas o basar b'tishrei shtar me'uchar hu v'kasher diver Rebbe Yehuda Rebbe Yossi posa. Okay, so we have a related machlokas. It's a totally different issue, but it's related to dating a shtar at the improper date. Now, as you all know, when you have a sh- what's called a shtar muktam, a predated shtar, where basically the malve and the lova both agree let's date the loan, the loan document, the promissory note, earlier than when the loan took place. That is illegal, that is a commission of fraud, and that document is not a legal document. Why is that? So what's the reason? Remember, want to remember the reason? Lukuchos. Right, because if you, if you predate the loan, you're falsely stating that a lien was created before the loan took place, and that can defraud potential purchasers from the debtor. Because if, let's say, the loan was not made until Tishrei, but you predate it to the previous Nissan, so then what's going to happen? Anyone who purchased property between Nissan and Tishrei from the debtor now is on the hook if the debtor defaults on the loan. But that's not right. They shouldn't be on the hook because the loan was not generated until after they purchased their, their, their stuff. Okay, so that's illegal. What about if you post-date a star? Is there any downside to post-dating a star? Essentially, at face, at face value, there should be no downside to post-dating a star because all you're doing is taking away the privilege from a creditor. Yeah. Instead of the creditor's lien starting from uh, July, if you post-date it that the loan took place in August, then you're giving the advantage to the Yes. buyers, you're not giving the advantage to the creditor. So at face value there should be nothing wrong. So, But as we're going to see in a moment, there, there may be a problem with a post-dated star as well. So here you have a machlokis. You have a star that is post-dated. Now how do we know that it's post-dated? Because they use the secular date. Let's say on the star they put that the date is July 15th. Okay, July 15th, 2017. It just so happens that July 15th is a Shabbos. When we look at the calendar, we discover that July 15th is a Shabbos. This loan could not have possibly occurred on Shabbos because we know that Jews don't draft documents on Shabbos. So we, e- either it's predated or it's postdated. Predated, we know that it can't be because no one is allowed to draft a predated unless there's evidence that there was commission of fraud. So therefore, our only assumption is going to be that this must be a predated star. Post-dated. Po- post-dated. Sorry, it's a post-dated <coughs> star. And they didn't look at the calendar, and that's it. They didn't look at the calendar, yeah. or they chose to, uh, the creditor chose to give some leeway that he didn't have to, but he gave some leeway to the debtor to post-date it to give him to do him a favor. Mm. Okay? But I meant they didn't look at the calendar to see if it was Shabbos. Well, yeah. yeah, maybe they just didn't, they weren't careful. So yeah. that's the very Rebbe Yehuda. But Rebbe Yossi says that is going to be puzzle as well. Yeah. I can understand how a star, I can understand how a star can't be written on Shabbos, but what is special about a setup and a tishrei that a star can't be written on that day? That's Yom Kippur. A star of a tishrei is Yom Kippur. So Yom Kippur is also a date when people are not going to write a star. Why can't he claim he made it multi-shows? Because that's... Because it's not multi-shows. 
Oh, you're saying because it's July 15th, because maybe it was July 15th, yeah. Saturday night. Yeah. Okay, perhaps that's true. Perhaps if we use, if you go according to the so secular you, calendar you that we 15, use, maybe yeah. you could make but that. The Gemara is not talking about the secular the, calendar. Right, the Gemara is talking about where the secular calendar also begins at sunset and ends at sunset. <laughs> okay. okay? Where the night In any event, so because it says the hour. Let's say it says uh, at, uh, at 10 a.m. on July 15th, right? So then the Gemara says, so Amr lo Rebbe Yehuda, this is a continuation of the Brises, Amr lo Rebbe Yehuda, so the question is, why should, why should you Rebbe Yossi posa? So Amr lo Rebbe Yehuda, ba'alo ma'isa bolofanecha b'sipori v'hich sharta. But I know that you yourself had a, had a real-life case, Rebbe Yossi, where you presided over the basin with a post-dated star, and you said it was okay. So Amr lo keshe hich sharti, ba'ze hich sharti. So Rebbe Yossi said, you're right, but it was only because it was clear from the star that it was post-dated. The only time that I disagree with you is when the post-dating is not evidence, is not self-evident from the star. So what do we mean self-evident? Because when you look at a calendar, you see it was Shabbos. Right. But let's say July 15th was not a Shabbos, it was a Wednesday. So then there's no indication that it's post-dated. That's where I say that it's not permitted. You're not allowed to post-date a star. V'ha Reb Yudanami Bazek Ka'amar. So the Gemara says, but Rabbi Yehuda was also talking about a case where we find out that July 15th is a Shabbos. So Amar Rabbi Pedas HaKol Modim Shim Huzkaknu La'onoso Shil Shtar Benimtsei Sonoso Mechubenes B'Shabbos O Basar B'Tevi Shishtar Me'uchar Hu V'Kasha Lo Nechluku Ela B'Shtar Me'uchar Ba'alma So he says, the Gemara says, you're right. There's no machlokis. When it's self-evident from the Shtar, when we look at a calendar and we discover that that date is Shabbos, it's clear that it's a post-dated Shtar and therefore, even Rabbi Yossi agrees that that's not a problem. Because once you can see that it's post-dated, nothing bad can come from it, as you'll see in just a second. But uh, what's the machlokes? When you can't tell from the date on the star that it's post-dated. So what's the machlokes? The Rabbi Yehuda letaymei domer in kos ben shover velo nafik minei churva. Rabbi Yehuda holds that you never write a receipt on a, on a promissory note. You just tear up the original promissory note and draft a new one. Right, so, and therefore, nothing bad could ever come of it. But if you hold like Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi, letaime dorma kos fin shover, venafik mine churva. But Rabbi Yossi holds that you do write a shover. And therefore, that's where the destructiveness can come in. So now let's go through the, let's go through the story, okay? What's destructive that could happen if you post date a star if you allow for the writing of receipts? Listen to the following case. Okay, so Shimon borrows money from Ruben and Nisan, okay? And... <coughs> Instead of dating the promissory note from Nisan, they date the promissory note for the following Tishrei. Okay? In the interim, Shimon decides he gets the money and he's able to pay back the loan in Tammuz. He's able to pay it back three months early. So he puts, he gives, he gives uh, Ruvain a check for the full amount, and he says, or he gives him, a, let's say, a partial payment, and he says, can I have a receipt, please? So Ruvain says, sure, here's a receipt for the $600 that you paid. And then in Cheshvan, Ruvain comes with the promissory note Where's and my says, money? Where's my money? okay, you owe me now $1,000. And Shimon says, what are you talking about? I paid you $600 already. Uh -huh. And Ruvain says, that was for a, an old loans. loan. Exactly. That was for an old loan. Exactly. Look, this is a new loan that was made in Tishrei. In Tishrei. Your payment in Thomas couldn't possibly be for the $1,000 that I lent you in Tishrei. You paid it before Tishrei. So therefore, this you owe me a full thousand bucks, and whatever you paid me before has got nothing to do with this note. The receipt's not worth nothing. The receipt's worthless. That's right. That's the churva. That's the destructiveness of post-dating a star if you hold that you can write a receipt on, on loan payments. And when there's no receipt, he gives him back the star. Right. But when there's no receipt, you rip up the note. And therefore, for Rebbe Yehuda, it's never a problem. Yeah. Okay, so... Where's your note? It's ripped up. It's done. I don't, yeah. I don't owe anything. Who so, cares what the date was? Right? right. That's right. So anyway, so that's <laughs> the that's the issue, and that's why Rabbi Yossi says that even post dating a star is problematic. Okay. Now, related issue, but a new halacha. Amar Rav Huna Barei to Rabbi Yoshua. Pilu Laman to Amar Kos Fin Shovar. Hani Mili Apalga Abalakule Lo. So Rav Huna Barei to Rabbi Yoshua says to us that the only time that Rabbi Yossi holds that we write a receipt is only when the loba makes partial payment. 
But if the lova makes full payment, then yeah. we don't write a receipt. Now, why would we write a receipt? Why not just tear up the note? The Malva claims, you lost. Yo, I lost the note. I really feel terrible. Shimon, you're my friend. I lost the note. I know you want to pay back the loan. I don't have a note to give you, so let me write you a receipt. And that'll be in lieu of tearing up the note. So the halacha is we don't do that. Sorry, if you lost the note, then you can't collect on the debt. So the Gemara says, Velohi. But that's not how we paskin. Da filo akule kasvinan. Because we know from precedent that we write a receipt in such a situation, even for the full payment of the loan. Kihadur of Yitzchak bar Yosef of Amasik Bezuzi bar Rabbi Abba. There was once a story where Rabbi Abba owed money to Rabbi Yitzchak bar Yosef. We just saw a story yesterday where Rabbi Abba owed someone else money. And so, you know, apparently Rabbi Abba was a little bit pressed at one point in his life. He just had a rough patch. Anyway, also Lakami de Rabbi Chanina bar Papi. So they come to a Din Torah, and Rav Yitzchak says, please give me the payment that you owe me. And so Amr Lei Havli Shtaroi Ushkol Zuzecha. And Rabbi Abba said, with pleasure, I have the money, I'm ready to pay you, but you got to give me the note so we can tear it up. So Amr Lei Shtarcha Irkas Li Echta So Rav Yitzchak says, I'm sorry I lost the note. Let me just write you a receipt, and then we'll say Shalom Al Yisrael. So Amar Lei Ha Rabu Shmuel Darmi to Ravaya and Kosvin Shover. So Rabbi Rabbi Abba says, I'm sorry, but Rav and Shmuel both paskin that we don't write a shover on the full amount. And not only that, he he sounds like he's saying I don't paskin like Rabbi Yosi at all that we don't write a shover. Period. So Amar Man Yoiv Lan Me Afrei the Rabu Shmuel Ramin and Bainin. But ha, Rabbi Yochanan v'haresh lagish lami to Rabbi Yochanan shover. Mm. So Rabbi Yitzchak's response to him was, and the Rabbeinu Gershom understands that this is a respectful way of saying they are great people, Rabbi and Shmuel, but I still disagree because we have Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yochanan who disagree with Rabbi and Shmuel. Basically, he was saying, oh, give me some of their remains and I would honor them by putting some of their remains in my eyes. In other words, if only I could have some connection to Rabbi and Shmuel, I love them, but... At the same time, Rabbi Yochanan and Reish Lakish paskin differently, and they say that you do write a receipt, so I'm entitled to, to my money, I'll write you a receipt. He says, and Rabin said the same thing, that we do write a shover for the full amount, and it's only logical, says the Gemara, the Isal Kadaita, ain't Kosvin Shover, Avat Shtor Shlozei Yochel Hala Vichadi, question mark. He says, because if you're going to tell me that if a Malva loses his note, he doesn't get to collect on his loan ever. There's no remedy for that. No. So what are you going to say? That a debtor gets to basically walk away from with, with another person's money and rejoice oh, over it? In other words, that's not fair. It's not fair to a creditor to basically say that there's no remedy if he loses the promissory note. And not only that, but it's not fair to the debtor either. I don't want to constantly be in a state of debt. I, I, I'm not going to necessarily rejoice over the fact that I don't have to pay you back. Don't you have... When you owe someone money, you feel bad about it. You want to be done with it. You're not even allowing a, a borrower to be, to be done with it. Yeah, can he get this Adem? Can't, can't he bring the Adem who, saw, who signed on it originally and say, bring him? Let's, say, let's, say, let's say we can't find the Adem. Well, I just think there is an Adem, though. I mean, there, there would be an Adem. We could perhaps if we could find the Adem and have them write that new one. we were, at such and such a time, we were present when the loan was made and we're redrafting it and it was lost, and then he presents that, and then he tears it up, and then gives him back the money. Well, the we did three days. Yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. just bring the Adam and do it right. again. Yeah. Yeah. It, right. So that would be one remedy, but here I guess we're talking about a case where the Adam are not available. So maskif la vaya elamai. And by the way, even if we did that, Mark, here's the concern. I don't think that would be enough. What's the concern? The Adam will write up a new note. But what happens if the guy 20 years later pulls out the dresser and the finds old the old note again. and says, hey, wait a minute, I never collected on this debt. Yeah, but I, I think we learned in the Gemara that they, they write on it, this is a replacement for the original one. I think we said Even that. if it is, but what's going to prevent, how do you, maybe the Lova tore it up and threw it away. Yeah, 20 years later. Yeah, 20 years later, you know. So, So, Abaya says, well, what, well, if you're telling me that we do write a shover, but that's, you said, okay, you got to write a shover because otherwise it's not fair to the Malvin. But if you, if you insist on writing a shover, um, so, but then, 
then that's not fair to the loafer. Because now the loafer, for the rest of his life, has to hold on to this receipt that he's paid back the loan. If he ever loses his yeah. receipt, so then the mother is going to be able to come and rejoice over collecting Same problem the, the other way. Time. So, Amar Le Rabba in, Evid Loi Vil Ish Malva. So, Rabba said if it's a question of being unfair to the Malva versus being unfair to the Lova, it's better to be unfair to the, to the or inconvenience the Loiva by having him hold on to his shover because, after all, at the end of the day, who benefited from this deal? It was the Loiva. So, if you, we have to, it, like the inconvenience like the, somebody. The Pusik says, a Loiva is a slave to a Malva. Uh, you know, so if we have to inconvenience somebody, let's inconvenience the Lova. So yesterday, too. Okay, Tanan Hasam. Now we have a Mishnah. Shtari Chov, and we saw this Mishnah before in Bava Mitzvah. Shtari Chov HaMukdamin Pesulam VaMucharin Kesherim. We said that promissory notes that are predated or puzzle for the reason that we mentioned before about defrauding purchasers from a debtor. But if it's postdated, it's perfectly kosher. Amar of Hamnuna, and by the way, you have to say that this Mishnah goes like Rabbi Yehuda, not like Rabbi Yossi. Because as we saw before, that mm-hmm. if you hold that you write shovers, then something bad could happen by post-dating a promissory right. note as much as predating it. So, Amar of Hamnuna lo shanu el ashtari halva, avol shtari mekachu memkar afilu meukhari nami pesum. So, Rav Hamnuna says, going in the shita of Rabbi Yehuda, that the only time that we say <coughs> that you're allowed to post-date a note is only if it's a promissory note on a loan. But if it's a sale document, if it's a sales document, so then even Rebbe Yehuda would agree that you can't post-date that. Why? My time is in the Mazben Lei Arab Benisan, the Kasev Lei V'tishrei, who Misrami Lei Zuzi Beni Beni, the Zavin Lei Minei, the Chimati Tishrei Matpik Lei V'omer Lei Hodar Zavanta Minach. So he says, because what's the destructive thing that could happen? It's very common that when a person sells a piece of real estate, people generally, in the, the attitude of the Gemara is people sell real estate reluctantly. No one wants to unload property. If, let's say, you needed to relocate, and, so, and you didn't need to sell your house in Thornhill in order to put a down payment on your house in Yehupipsville, wouldn't you hold on to your house in Thornhill? People love to hold on to real estate because real estate only accrues in value. So therefore, when a person has to sell a property, he does so reluctantly, And many times it would be that you would make a deal. The seller would make a deal with the buyer and says, listen, if within six months I get enough money to buy it back from you, we agree that I can buy it back from you. Six months, no questions, right? That was a very common stipulation in a contract of sale. Now the problem is is that let's say you post-date the bill of sale. So what happens is is that we dated, the, the sale took place in Nissan, but we post-date the sale as having taken place six months later in Tishrei. And then the seller somehow is able to get cash in Tamas. So he comes to the buyer and he says, here, I'm giving you your money back. I want the property back. So fine, good, property is yours. Then all of a sudden, the buyer comes in, in Cheshvan and he says, hey, would you mind getting off my property? And the guy says, what are you talking about? I bought it back. I sold it to you, and I bought it back from you. In Tammuz, he says, it's true you bought it back from me from Tammuz, but I bought it back from you in Elul. And here's my proof. Or in Tishrei, I bought it back from you in Tishrei, because here's my bill of sale. Right? So that's the problem of post-dating it, because there could be fraud committed by post-dating a bill of sale, uh, you know, even if it's post-dated. Yeah. So the Gemara says, Ihachi shtari halva anamni. So the Gemara says, well, by that argument, there's a possibility of fraud being committed when you post a, a promissory note. You just said it. Because as the example that we just gave at the top of the Amud, the guy is going to borrow money in Nisan, but we post-date the loan is taking place in Tishrei. The debtor pays back the loan. Shimon pays back the loan already in Tammuz. And then in Cheshvan comes along the, uh, the creditor and says, here, pay me back for the loan that you made in Tishrei. And the guy says, but I paid you. He says, how could you have paid me if you paid me in Tammuz? The loan didn't take place yet in Tishrei. And, uh, and I, you have a receipt for your payment, but I still have the loan document that's from a different loan. 
So yes, of course you paid me, but that was for an old loan. So the Gemara answer is Ksavarein Kosvin Shovar. Because Rav Hanuna holds that you don't write a shover. He holds like Rabbi Yehuda, who says that we don't write shovers. If we don't write shovers, not, this could never, that, a post-dated note could never result in this kind of situation. Because what would happen is, is that as soon as Shimon pays back the dead in Tammuz, he would demand the post-dated note, and he would tear it up. So there would never be a possibility of the guy producing it. But in the case of sales, it's not an issue of, um, of uh, you, you don't tear up a deed, you, I mean, you, you don't tear up a bill of sale, uh, that's the issue, that's the reason. In a case of loans, we tear up the promissory note. Mm. In a case of sale documents, mm. the sale document was recorded. There's no requirement to return the bill of sale. When you get a receipt for having purchased something, you don't have to tear up the receipt once you return the object. So therefore, that's why this could potentially be destructive in a case where uh, it's a purchase document. What do you do for with partial again, partial payments? It's a machlokas in the Mishnah. That's the machlokas between Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yehuda says you write a new note for the reduced amount, and Rabbi Yossi says you don't tear up the note, but you write a shover to the loan. So Amar le Rav Yemar le Rav Kahana, Varmi le Rav Yemi Yemedifti le Rav Kahana, Ay v'ha'idna de Kasvin and Shtari me'ukhari de Kasvin and Tavra, he says, I understand Rav, Rav Hanun Ashita. He says, a post-dated shtar could result in, in an, act of, an act of fraud. Why then is it that today we're not worried about that? We post-date, um, uh, uh, we, we post-date promissory notes, and we write shovers like Reb Yossi. Why do we do that if that could result in, in a commission of fraud? So the Gemara says, Basar Dharma Lu Rebi Abulasafri ki Kasvisu Shtar Muchari Kisfuhachi, Shtar Dinan Lobizmani Kasvine, Ella Acharnuhu ve Kasvanuhu. He says, the answer is because today, when we write a post dated star, we go like Rebi Abba, who told his sofer that anytime you write a post dated star, you must write explicitly in the post dated star that this is a post dated star. Right. Once you write it explicitly, so then a guy can't, a creditor can't come back and say, you paid me for the old loan, not for the new loan. Because the guy can say, but it says in the star that it's post-dated. So therefore, prove to me that this is not the same loan. It's right. the same amount. Right. So therefore, I'm claiming that I paid you already, and here's my shover, and you have no case. So the Gemara now says, Amr le ravashi le rav kahana, dehoidin to the lokav dinan hachi, I, but what the fact is, is that today we don't do that. Today we don't go like Rebbe Abba's requirement to write explicitly that this is a post-dated star. So what, what, what's our defense? So Basar Domerle, Rav Safra L'Safra, Ki Kasviso Hani Tavri, Iadisu Zimna Deshtar Kisvu, Ilo Kisvu Stama, Dechol Emes Enofik Lirei. See, the answer is, is because today we go like Rav Safra's based in. Rav Safra told his sofer, he says, take a look at the date in the original promissory note. And when you write a guy a shovar, use the date in the original promissory note as and write that as the date for the payment of the sh- In other words, write that this is a receipt for a loan that was made on such and such a date as is recorded in the shah. So write it on the receipt. Write it on the receipt. Yeah, not and on now, a loan document. On that a loan document. Yeah. So now if the, guy, if the creditor tries to collect the second time, even though it's post-dated, right. the guy can show him the sh- Yes, it's true, I paid you in Tammuz, but the, the, the it's for the loan that was dated in Tishrei. And therefore, I paid you for that already. So therefore, that's his evidence. So, Amalei Ravina le Ravashi, Ramalei le Ravashi le Rav Kahana, Veha ha'idna de lo kavdina nachi. I, but that we don't do either. In other words, today, we write post-dated loan documents. We write receipts without the date, connecting the date to the original loan date. How can we do that? Where's the protection to the debtor? Right. Is this dialogue skipping years? I mean, jumping years in the Gemara? What do you mean? Oh, oh, it, it, it could be. It could be. Right. It's, it's, it's multi-generational. In other words, this is, these are quotes from previous right. things, yeah. So, Amar Lei, Rabbanan Takuni Takini, Manda Abed Abed, Manda La Abed, Ihu Huda Afsedan Afshek. Beautiful answer. What's the answer that the Gemara gives? you got to hire Shlomi Leibowitz to be your lawyer. In other words, basically what it's saying is, is that, listen, the rabbis have instituted laws to protect the rights of parties who enter into financial agreements. If you want to take advantage of those protection laws, 
use them. Use them. And if you don't, because you didn't get a good lawyer to draft your contract, buyer beware. It's I'm saying it's no, it's not even buyer beware. It's that you you have to, you have a responsibility to protect yourself from getting defrauded. If you don't use the available uh, accommodations that Chazal offered to you, so then it's your problem. Don't blame the rabbis because they allow the right uh, post-dated uh, promissory notes. They created a mechanism where a post-dated promissory note could never result in fraud. But you didn't get a lawyer who knew the halacha properly to draft the contract for you. Right? And that, that's, that's your fault. Next time, spend the five, how much do you charge an hour? <laughs> spend the 500 bucks for the retainer and get him to draft a good document for you. You see that, that this mechanism of writing There's that extra thing on the... They're available, use them. Is what? Give you a PR. It's not a halakha, it's just that it's a recommendation. And PR, man. You should do it, you should make sure you... PR caters. You know ...how to do that. The, the rabbis basically said, there's always a potential for fraud if you're not careful. These are the accommodations that you do, that you should you put in your documents to protect yourself from the possibility of being defrauded. And if you don't use them, it's like, it's like anything in secular law. If you don't have a lawyer review your contract, you're opening yourself up for, your, your, for vulnerability, right? So don't blame, the, don't blame the law for not helping you. The law is there to help you, but if you don't utilize the law, so then it's your own fault. Uh, I don't okay. understand the system. If you post date a note uh, and you sell some, uh, so you we got to say Kaddish. Just oh, give yeah, me one yeah. second, Rabbi.